Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. What's up everyone? I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions and today we're going to take a look at Bitcoin Wallet from Bitcoin.com. Hodl that Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. They've got Bitcoin savings accounts where you can earn Bitcoin uh, interest paid on your Bitcoin. Uh, you can also check out their Bitcoin back loans where you use your Bitcoin as collateral to obtain a Canadian or US dollar loan. So if you're in a pinch, you need to get your hands on dollars, but maybe you don't want to sell it. This could be an option for you. And finally, they've got their B2X option, which gives you double the exposure to the price fluctuations of Bitcoin. And secondly, we've got Rise Wallet. This is a gift card that you can pick up at a store near you and gift somebody Bitcoin. It's super easy, super idiot proof and great to onboard new users. The way it works is you pick one up, you can gift it to anybody and the person downloads the paired app scratches and scans a code on the back. It sets them up a new Bitcoin wallet on their phone instantaneously and sends them an on-chain Bitcoin transaction to their own personally held Bitcoin wallet. I love it. I've gifted it to lots of friends and family and I highly recommend you check them out on risewallet.com. Click on locations and see where you can pick one up. Now this is currently only in Canada but they are looking at expanding so keep an eye on it. And with that let's dive into the video. So we are going to be looking at Bitcoin Wallet. The reason I'm taking a look at this video, at this uh, particular wallet today is it's one of the top results when you go to the App Store and you type in Bitcoin. And so usually a lot of new users will stumble upon this wallet or and a few others first. So I wanted to take a look at Bitcoin Wallet and see how it works and if it's all that it's cracked up to be and if it's actually presenting a Bitcoin wallet to users. Let's dive a little deeper. So I'm here in the Google Play App Store and I've just searched Bitcoin and the first non-advertisement option that I get for a downloadable app is indeed the Bitcoin wallet from Bitcoin.com. And when I go there, of course, I've already installed it prior to making this video, uh, but what we get presented with is this description Buy and manage your Bitcoin in one secure app. So um, as a new user to Bitcoin, this probably sounds exactly like what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and open the app and see what it looks like. Now, initially when you download this, you will see a loading screen where it says setting up wallets. But other than that, this is pretty much where you're gonna land. So on the main screen here, I can see bitcoin.com up, up top. I see the buttons receive by Bitcoin. I see that my wallets are ready. I can just X out of that. And then I see Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Core, which to a newcomer, again, may seem a little odd or strange or, or confusing why there are two different types of Bitcoin in front of them. Um, but regardless, scroll down, I see buy Bitcoin now. I see some useful links, bitcoin.com, uh, news, tools, Bitcoin price charts, free Bitcoin cash, uh, Bitcoin loans, exchange between BTC and BCH. So again, begging the question for newcomers, why is there two types and why would I exchange between them? And then I see also links to the Bitcoin cash, Reddit and Bitcoin.com Twitter. And then across the bottom, I can see I have my wallets, receive, scan, send, and shop. So let's just kind of take a look around here. First of all, um, it looks like my wallets are set up and good to go. So let's see what the receive button gets me. I hit receive. Uh, I do see something that says wallet not backed up. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then I, I see receive and it says my BCH wallet. So that is a wallet for Bitcoin Cash. And if you're wondering what Bitcoin Cash is, that is not Bitcoin. It is an altcoin uh, that split off from Bitcoin back in 2017 in August. And uh, it is currently sitting around the number four or number five spot in terms of uh, market cap for cryptocurrencies. So this is indeed not 
Bitcoin and not what I'm looking for. So maybe if I go, it says address type, there's a drop down menu. Maybe this will change to Bitcoin for me. Uh, legacy, no, that's still Bitcoin Cash. BitPay, that is still Bitcoin Cash. So, so this does not get me to anything related to Bitcoin. So let's go back to the main screen. Okay, what if I want to buy Bitcoin maybe? Uh, <laughs> and of course it takes me to a screen that says buy Bitcoin cash, which not exactly what I was looking for. So perhaps I can back out of that if it lets me. Hmm, okay. Um, hi. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me just restart the app. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, okay. So, okay. Well, it worked that time, but still buy Bitcoin cash uh, instantly with your credit card, enter email to get, well, I'm not looking to buy Bitcoin cash. So let's back out of that. Okay. Now um, I see my two wallets here, Bitcoin cash and Bitcoin core. Now, for those of you who don't know what Bitcoin core is and why would you, because it's, it should just be called Bitcoin, but Bitcoin core is one of the implementations of the Bitcoin software that allows you to use the Bitcoin network. There are also multiple different implementations of the Bitcoin cash network, um, but oddly enough, they don't specify a certain implementation of Bitcoin cash here. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to show you on screen really quick here for Bitcoin cash. There are actually multiple versions of the software. And then if we switch over to Bitcoin core, Indeed, there are also multiple versions of the software. They've just opted to use the most widely used version of the software. But technically, if they had done the same for Bitcoin Cash, it should be labeled Bitcoin Cash ABC. Uh, but you will notice that it has not been labeled that. So very interesting. You can also see here underneath Bitcoin Cash, it says instant transactions with low fees. The thing about that is, is that the speed of transaction with Bitcoin and with Bitcoin Cash is exactly the same because every 10 minutes there is, or roughly every 10 minutes for both networks, there is a settlement um, known as a new block of transactions that is added to the global ledger, which would be known as the blockchain. So for them to say that there are instant transactions on Bitcoin Cash, quite to the contrary, they still have to wait for the 10 minute confirmation times uh, that Bitcoin core or just Bitcoin would. So I do find that to be relatively deceptive. Okay, well, let's see. It said buy Bitcoin above. Maybe if I hit buy Bitcoin down, no, that still takes me to buy Bitcoin cash, even though it's right below the actual Bitcoin wallet. Okay. Well, let's take a look uh, a little deeper here. So, okay, I'll just go into the Bitcoin wallet specifically. Uh, okay, so I would hope this, okay, good. It takes me to a receive Bitcoin um, address. Now, uh, this is a QR code that you would typically use to um, have scanned by another individual holding a wallet uh, if you're person in person or you can copy the address down below and send it in a text message email uh, whatever you prefer now the one thing i notice here is that the address starts with a one and again for new users you may not be familiar but this is actually called a legacy address and it is a I won't say out of date because it's still compatible, but it is, it is the oldest version of how you can have a, 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 a Bitcoin address. There are other addresses known as SegWit addresses that either start with a three or a BC1. And it makes me believe that again, it's, it seems to be deceptive marketing practices on, a, on behalf of Bitcoin.com in that this, type of address format will surely 
uh, result in inflated fees and suboptimal experience when using Bitcoin. If you have an address that has a three or a BC one, it actually helps you cut down on fees when you go to send back out of the wallet to another recipient. So again, seems a little odd to me. Um, now let's take a little bit more of a look here. If we go into settings in the top right, um, looking down here, we can actually change the Bitcoin network fee policy. Um, now what you'll see here is that they've default put Bitcoin cash to one Satoshi per byte, which is the smallest, uh, the smallest denomination of a Bitcoin or, um, Bitcoin Cash. It's the smallest piece of a Bitcoin that you can have. There are 100 million Satoshis in a Bitcoin or in Bitcoin Cash as well. Uh, but you can see that they defaulted to 20 Satoshis per byte for Bitcoin Core. Now, Bitcoin Cash in a Satoshis per byte um, default for to get into the next block, to get into the next 10 minute set of transactions amended to the ledger, uh, yes, indeed, um, a lot of the time will be slightly lower because there is not a lot of usage or a lot of demand for the space that they have. In fact, they regularly process far less transactions than the Bitcoin network. That said, if you're not in a huge rush, 20 Satoshis per byte is, is way, way too high and you could easily get away with doing one Satoshi per byte. So let's see if we can reduce that down to one Satoshi per byte. Now, urgent, you'll, you'll notice that they set this at one Satoshi per byte for Bitcoin Cash all the way up to urgent. So what if I want to reduce my Bitcoin core fee policy? It doesn't even go down to one. They don't even allow me to do that to see if it would work. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let's go back to this, go back to the settings a little bit here one more time. Uh, now, one other thing I noticed here is when you go into advanced settings, there is something, uh, a little note here that says use unconfirmed funds and it's actually turned on. And that is actually not great for security. Now they here say if enabled, wallets will also try to spend unconfirmed funds. Um, turning off this option may cause transaction delays which again, I find super funny because uh, it's actually more detrimental to have it on because any transaction that you receive, whether it be Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin, if it is unconfirmed, then you do not officially have that money yet and it could potentially be double spent, meaning somebody could send it to you and then simultaneously try to send it to another wallet and there's a chance that you may end up on the line and not have that money anymore um, if the op opposing transaction gets confirmed. So by having this on, it's actually a problem. They say it may cause transaction delays because technically you shouldn't really be spending unconfirmed funds anyways because if the transaction that comes into you is not confirmed, then when you spend it to somebody else, if they accept unconfirmed funds, then uh, they could be out the money too as a chain reaction as the Bitcoin blockchain or the Bitcoin cash blockchain uh, gets reorganized to accommodate the difference in spending habits based on that double spend. So again, just all together, not a great policy to have. So at this point, I'm going to leave this walkthrough be, um, and I'm gonna wrap up by giving you some recommendations of better wallets that you could check out that are indeed actually for Bitcoin and not deceptively geared towards getting you to buy an alternative currency like Bitcoin Cash. So what do you think of Bitcoin Wallet from Bitcoin.com? Do you think it's fair the way that they have presented their wallet in the app store and within the app itself and all of the links and everything that they provide throughout the user experience? Or do you, like myself, find it a tad deceptive? If 
it's the latter, then maybe you want to explore some other options. There are some other great wallets that I would recommend. Uh, there is Samurai Wallet, which is only available on Android. I do have an old tutorial for that, which I'll link below. Uh, there is Blockstream Green or just Green Wallet, which you can find both iOS and Android, which is an excellent alternative for Bitcoin wallets. You can also check out HODL Wallet, which is available also on both iOS and Android. And uh, for desktop, you can always check out both Electrum and Wasabi Wallet. Let me know all your thoughts and check out some of those tutorials and links that I've posted down below. And as always, please do remember to hit like, subscribe, and share. If you're uh, wanting to help out the show in another way, you can always hit up the sponsor links below. That was Ledin and Rise Wallet. And also, as I said before, check out Wasabi Wallet. Great for privacy when it comes to Bitcoin. And finally, you can check out NordVPN. This is a wonderful service that helps you with your privacy. And if you're into Bitcoin, then privacy should be important to you. Uh, what it does is it hides your IP address encrypts your browsing data and has other added benefits like unlocking geo-blocked content. So if you head over to NordVPN via the link down below or if you just head there and use the code BTC sessions, you can get a deal where it gets you 70% off and a month free. It ends up being about $3.49 a month, which is pretty damn good in my opinion. With that, I am out. Have yourself a wonderful day and I will see you next time for your daily session.